Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and if you've been long enough on the channel, you know that, except for astronomy, I'm also obsessed with uh, programming, and specifically machine learning and artificial intelligence. Now, there's actually something really, really cool that has been released very recently by Google team that will allow you, or may allow you, to actually help them search for exoplanets using machine learning. What? Okay, let's talk about this in a little bit more detail, and welcome to What the Math. So this right here is the infamous Kepler telescope. Okay, I know, I know I did it again. I know I said infamous. I shouldn't really use that word. I know Kepler telescope didn't really do anything bad, but it just it keeps sticking to me. I can't really change my vocabulary. I can't help it. Okay, fine. This famous telescope called Kepler is right in front of you, and it's uh, actually right out of fuel. It's going to uh, basically uh, finish its final mission known as K2 in a few months, and will most likely end up orbiting around Earth for a little bit, and then possibly just kind of disappear into the abyss. Now, here's the thing about Kepler. It has a lot of data. It has collected a lot of data over the years. As a matter of fact, like terabytes and terabytes of data. So it's kind of hard to analyze it. And very recently, uh, a few astronomers, along with a few Google developers, decided to actually use all of this data they collected right here um, and apply machine learning to it and see if they can actually find something. They only used a very, very small part of the data and spent um, a few uh, weeks basically running the machine learning on, on the data, and they actually found two undiscovered planets in the data that we used to have. Long story short, uh, the two planets discovered, and I've talked about them a few months ago, were Kepler-90i and Kepler-80g. As a matter of fact, uh, both of these planets are so new and uh, so recently discovered that they haven't really been added to any of the databases that I usually use for simulation. So, um, Kepler-90 has the planet known as, okay, that's not actually it, uh, known as 90i, which... I believe actually has a completely different designation in, in here, and uh, it might be this one here, I think. Yeah, I think it's this uh, undesignated object that is that is actually orbiting right here, and I finally was able to select it. It's uh, basically a completely newly identified object. We have no information about it. We think it's a terrestrial world. Uh, its other des designation is KOI351i. Uh, Everything about it is unknown. It's about 1.3 uh, planetary radii of uh, compared to Earth. Anyway, so th this is what um, Kepler 90 looks like, and Kepler 80 uh, G looks like this. In other words, very very similar. Uh, we still know nothing about it. It's about the same size, maybe a little bit smaller than Kepler 90 I, and uh, once again, it's sort of uh, around. It's orbiting around a uh, star that's. Uh, a relatively similar to TRAPPIST-1. So, we found these uh, planets, and the thing is, we can actually find a lot more, because we believe now that there's a lot of data that uh, we analyzed where we missed potential planets, and we still have a lot of this data saved. And here's what Google did, and this is actually brilliant. Both to help them with the project itself, and to actually help you learn uh, about the project, to learn about machine learning, and to also learn about astronomy, they essentially open source the whole thing. In other words, you can go out there, you can download the whole thing, and you can try to find some really cool planets completely by yourself, and I'm not even joking here. Now, I'm not going to do this in this video, as a matter of fact, I might not even uh, do it at all unless you guys actually request uh, this, because it does require a tremendously large download, and I, when I looked at how much I have to download, I had to download, I kind of just said, well, maybe I'll just kind of wait for people to ask me to do it, because it would take me hours to install this thing, but let me just give you a little bit of detail about what you have to do if you're interested in this. So first of all, this is based entirely on Python, which I've used before. And uh, to basically use this, I think the easiest way is to download what's known as um, Anaconda, which is a re basically a repository of various Python libraries that will allow you to do this uh, analysis pretty quickly and pretty efficiently. Um, essentially, what you'll be looking at are these dips of luminosity when either a planet or a binary star uh, or... Uh, a partner of a binary star passes in front of it. Now, unfortunately, the neural network is still not, not very good at establishing who's what and what's where. 
but uh, it can actually find these within uh, relatively noisy data better than humans. In other words, we think that there's a lot of these we missed uh, in the data. And because this is actually running on a neural network, this means that it will require some time to train uh, this particular neural network, and this might require possibly hours or even days of training. Now, I've, I've run simple neural networks before where I basically just analyze my handwriting or analyze pictures. Even that takes uh, anywhere from a few minutes to hours to train. These uh, data sets are a little bit more complex, and uh, even though the data is actually not very complex, just because of the amount of data, it might actually be quite time consuming. So if you have a good computer and have lots of time on your hands, do consider doing this. It's a great, great, great educational opportunity. Now, the actual instructions for how to uh, proceed with the project are on their uh, GitHub, and this is under TensorFlow uh, Models Astronet. Uh, there's quite a lot of um, different research models they have, but this one is specifically for this project. And basically, they kind of show you what they do. They, they look for the dips in light, uh, looking at various light curves from uh, Kepler database. The installation instructions here are pretty clear. Um, they do kind of tell you what to install. One thing though is that it's mostly aimed at people using Mac or Linux. So if you are on Windows, it's actually a little bit more difficult. It requires a few more steps. And um, if you are interested and want me to one day explain how to do this, I'll actually post a separate video showing you how to install all of this, but I do need to free up a lot of hard drive space for this to actually work. Now, this is where the hard drive space comes in. You have to download Kepler data and you have to download uh, data that is essentially uh, known as threshold crossing events. This is essentially what you're looking at here, and it's pretty heavy on space. You actually have to get two files here. One is the CSV, or I guess a database file, uh, from NASA Exoplanet Archive, the website that we've used many, many, many times in the past. It kind of looks like this. It's a brilliant website that has a lot of data on various exoplanets, stars, and so on. Uh, they kind of tell you which specific uh, roles you need to download. But the heavy thing, which uh, according to them is at least 90 gigabytes, but in my experience, it was actually a lot more, is from this uh, Mikulski Archive for Space Telescopes. This is essentially where they store the Kepler data, and you can totally go there and see what it looks like. And as a matter of fact, the Kepler, Kepler data is, uh, I believe, right here. Uh, there's a lot of files there, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff, and uh, there's a lot of things to uh, download. So uh, luckily, uh, they actually automate it for you uh, using Python, and so there's actually a Python code that you just run, and it downloads everything for you within like, I guess, a few hours, maybe. Uh, I didn't have enough space on my hard drive, and I didn't really want to struggle uh, through the actual download just for the sakes of trying it. So I'll definitely try it one day when I have a little bit more time on my hands, and specifically when I actually am ready to train this network, because I'm sure this will take quite a while. Now, the code itself is actually pretty self-explanatory, and you don't really even need to know much Python. You can just follow the instructions they have here to try to run this and discover the same planets that they discovered, uh, as long as you have everything installed. Now, there might be a lot of errors popping up, and there might be actually a lot of things you're missing in, uh, in terms of installations, and if that happens, uh, do post a comment below. Maybe someone will help you and or I'll be able to answer you as well on how to install these things. Uh, but I personally encountered at least 10 errors while I was installing this stuff, mostly because uh, my version of Python was different from their version of Python and also my version of operating system was a little bit different, but it's definitely possible. Uh, I kind of actually wish they included more sort of... Uh, help and tutorial on how to install in different systems. Unfortunately, I believe this was all meant only for Mac users or possibly Linux users, but I haven't really tried this on my Linux box yet. Anyway, long story short, if you scroll down to the bottom, uh, this is where they kind of explain on how you can discover the Kepler-90i completely by yourself using the code that they provided. Um, from what uh, I see so far, I honestly think this is actually one of the best tools to use for not only planetary discovery, but also for learning how neural networks work, along with learning a little bit of astrophysics and astronomy. Uh, Okay, maybe not as much astrophysics, but definitely astronomy. And uh, the cool thing about this is that you might potentially discover a planet nobody has ever discovered before. As a matter of fact, there's a very high chance that if you actually use data that ha they haven't used, and they do tell you which uh, data sets they've used for this, um, there's a 
big chance, very, very big chance that one of you wonderful people will actually be responsible for discovering a completely new exoplanet. And you know what happens when that happens, right? You totally have to name it something cool, like after your favorite Pokemon, favorite YouTuber, maybe. Or possibly after some really, really cool uh, mythological creature that nobody has ever thought of before. Anyway, so do give this a try, and if you're having trouble installing this, and or would like me to make a video uh, explaining some of these principles in a little bit more detail, I'm definitely going to try this in the future, but definitely after I kind of figure out a way to install this on my Linux box, uh, free up some space there, give it uh, a few days to train the network, and possibly discover a planet by my own, and then I'll probably become a super famous person, uh, and uh, most likely retire on my uh, fame. Not gonna happen. I'm telling you right now, not gonna happen. I don't think I will be discovering any, anything anytime soon. Anyway, pretty awesome thing. Check it out uh, in the links in the description below. This is all entirely open source and absolutely free. And definitely an amazing, amazing educational tool for those of you interested in astronomy and machine learning and Python and programming. Well, that's all I wanted to say in this video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.